Hi everybody, this is Matt Reisinger with Reisinger Homes. Welcome to my video blog on green building and building science. We're doing some pre-testing today on a remodel project that we're about to start. We wanted to get some benchmarks and we're about to show you what a uh, blower door test looks like. This is Tim Brown, the principal of uh, Pioneer Designs. Tim does uh, some energy testing and some energy modeling through his company. And I appreciate you coming by today, Tim. My pleasure. So Tim, can you tell us what, uh, what this blower door test entails and what this equipment behind you does? Absolutely. So the purpose of the blower door test is to check how leaky the house is, how much infiltration of outside air you have coming into your house. And it's a pretty simple setup. It's just a big fan. Mm -hmm. uh, we seal the door. And what we're doing is depressurizing the house. One, it, it tells us how much um, air changes per hour we have, but two, it also lets us physically locate areas of leakage. So basically what we're doing is just taking one door off, every other door and window in the house is shut down, right. and we're putting a big fan in this door to pressurize the house, uh, or pardon me, to depressurize the house rather, we're blowing this fan out to the outside, and then we're gonna be able to go around and actually physically feel where some of the air would be leaking in. And the idea is this fan kind of exacerbates normal conditions and gives us an idea of how leaky this house would be on just an average day. And when we're all said and done, Tim will be able to tell us what the air changes per hour on this house is. So let's, uh, let's crank it up, Tim, and see how we're doing. So we'll take the house to negative 50 pascals. So he's cranking up to 50 pascals of, of air pressure differential between the inside of the house and the outside. It's about to get loud, so we're going to have to talk loud here. But if you can zoom in here, the pascal rating is on your left here, and then the CFM rating is on the right. Did I say that correctly? Is that the CFMs, Tim? That's CFM 50. That's CFM 50, right. So this fan is moving about 4,000 CFMs right now at 50 pascals of pressure. We're actually 53 pascals, 52. He's bringing it down just slightly. And Tim, I think we mentioned before, this house is insulated in the, uh, in the flat on the ceiling. So my theory is that we probably have a fair amount of loss at all these recessed cans that are poking through our drywall air barrier. So let's turn the camera off for one sec, set up a ladder, and let's look for a couple leaky areas on this house. So one area in the house of, uh, that's a problem area is uh, recessed cans. They poke through the attic, and it basically opens a hole to your unconditioned attic space to the conditioned area. Wow, look at that, Tim. Look at that airflow. I think we're seeing a lot of airflow through those cans. Yeah. Hey, let's try one more thing. One of the places that we see a lot of times where the, uh, where the air barrier is broken is around cabinetry where we've got Romex wires poking through. So let's set up the ladder uh, near the cabinets where I know we've got some wires poking through there. See if we've got any infiltration over there as well. So I'm up on the ladder in the kitchen. These are the upper cabinets right here. And this is pretty usual to see wires poke through here. Uh, this house was insulated with traditional fiberglass, which uh, does allow quite a bit of air movement. Had we had uh, spray foam in these walls, it would probably be a little bit different. But if you look here where these Romex wires are coming through, it's just a windstorm in there. A ton of airflow through that, through that cavity. You can see that little, little tail moving quite a bit. So there's, there is quite a bit of airflow in this house. But uh, surprisingly, this house, you'll see in a minute, tested pretty darn well. And so let's, let's go uh, look at one more airflow issue on this house, and then we'll wrap it up and show you the numbers. Okay, one other area that I wanted to mention, and this is a particularly important one, we're in the uh, utility room. This is the doorway that opens up into the garage space. You can see when that fan, uh, that fan's still on, it's really sucking a lot of air through here. When we close this door, you can even see a little bit of the light flow through there. But this, this door really does not seal very well. We're getting a lot of airflow through this door. And of all the doors that we don't want to get airflow through, it's that connection between the house and the garage. The garage has things that we do not want getting into the house's air. The exhaust from your car, gas that you're storing in there, paint fumes, all the noxious chemicals you're using on your yard or wherever. Hopefully you're reducing your use of those. But the garage is not a place we want air to come from. So we're definitely going to have to make a change on the store and tighten this up. And we really, in new construction and remodeling, want to make a particular emphasis on decoupling an attached garage like this from the air in your house. So those doors, uh, sealing those up is really important. And if you'll notice on some of these outlets, even like this outlet here, it's probably not going to be enough to be able to see from here. 
but if you put your hand on the outlet, you can feel some airflow through that as well. So we really want to be spray foaming these connections between the house and the garage, and having that fan on there really allows us to show you about that. So let's go back and take a look at the paperwork, turn the fan down, and see what this house actually tested at. All right, we're back now. Let's talk about the calculations. So Tim, how do you come up with a percent uh, air loss on this house? What are the numbers that you're plugging into a formula here? Well, the first thing we did is we figured out the volume of all the spaces in the house. So how many cubic feet of air we have in the house itself. Okay. So obviously the size of the house, but we're also factoring the height of the ceiling uh, ceilings as well. Right, right. So we got that. We had a 44,000 approximately cubic feet okay. of space inside the house. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can convert that to cubic feet per minute, just divide it by 60. Okay. So we got uh, 739 cubic feet per minute. That's if we were going to exhaust all the air in the house exactly. in one exactly. hour. So then we just take our calculations from our manometer, from okay. the reading on the, the blower door test, mm -hmm. and we're getting 247 cubic feet per minute okay. air changes from inside to outside. Got it. And that works out to about 33% of the air in the house every hour is exchanged with the outside air. And, that's, and that calculation is based on normal conditions, not when a fan's in the door, correct? Right. So in other words, on a normal day, uh, when everything's closed on the house, uh, this house is going to exchange all the air in the house just by leakiness through windows and doors and all those kinds of things. Right. Once every three hours, the air is going to get refreshed out of here. Exactly. So that number is actually not too bad. This house was built a little over 10 years ago uh, by a builder in town that I'm friends with. And they did a pretty good job, I would say, for a, for a 10 year old house. Most of the houses we're, we're building, my company's building today, are closer to uh, 15 to 20 percent or so leakage. So it's about double that, but overall, not a, not a very bad number at all. Right. And, and as we walked through here, Tim, one of the things that I saw that, that, uh, that surprised me was that that number was low, I think, because this builder used some nice products in here that can be leaky in other houses. Things like windows and doors are traditionally very leaky areas. This house has Anderson windows that are about 10 years old and they seem to be very tight. And the majority of the doors, not all the doors, but a lot of the doors in the house are these Anderson uh, door units that are well known to be uh, very sealing doors. They have a multi-point locking system and they seem to be very tight as we ran our, our hand around those with the, uh, with the fan on. So right. overall, I think this house is uh, tested very well. We'll be able to tighten up, I believe, the sealing line quite a bit and uh, we've got some work to do in this house to make it a little more efficient, but overall a pretty good baseline. Right. One more thing you might want to mention, the ASHRAE standards requires 35% per hour. So um, it's a little too tight for ASHRAE standards, but um, City of Austin requires 50% or less. Mm -hmm. So it's so good to, to introduce some air um, from a fresh air intake through your AC system instead of pulling it from your wall cavities through your yeah. outlets and things. Yeah. So That's a whole other conversation, but what right. Tim is basically saying is the V on HVAC is for ventilation, and houses that do not have a fresh air input are missing that V on the HVAC, and we want to build our houses as tight as possible so that we're not leaking in through doors or windows or ductwork or other places, and then we can introduce fresh air when we want to introduce it, and we can also filter it and send it through the whole house in the correct places rather than leaking in, for instance, through the garage like we saw there, or leaking in like that, that uh, recessed can you saw, which is also probably bringing in some fiberglass of the air, which is not good as well. Exactly. So thanks for your time, Tim. Looking forward to seeing this uh, same test performed in about nine months or so. My pleasure. Thanks, thanks buddy. Man. Have a good day, everybody. We'll see you next time.